Hey everybody, in this episode we're covering a very important part of React, and that is use context. When first learning about this, it can be a bit confusing, but once you understand why it's valuable and how it could help your application, it makes it just a bit less painful learning the new syntax and the new structure. So let's first talk about what it is for and why you might want to use it. So if we are working with some state and we want this state to be used across the entire application, that is where use context can come in handy. This will prevent us from having to pass props down multiple layers. When might you want to use this? I think of two really good examples. The first one is a theme across your website. Most of the examples out there for use context are going to be switching themes. And the other example I have is for logging in. So instead of trying to figure out if a user is logged in or logged out on all of our different components throughout our website, we're just going to create a context at the root level and surround our entire application with that code. So whether a user is logged in or not will be accessible throughout the entire application. This is gonna make it a lot easier to do things like modify the header to say log in or log out. So here we have this calendar button, but it doesn't really do anything. Instead, I want to change this to a log in button or a log out button. And which value is shown depends on the current state of that user. And pretty much anytime you want to customize things throughout your site, depending on whether that user is logged in, you could use use context for that. So we're going to take it pretty slow, make sure we understand everything. The first goal is to create that state at the global level and we will try to access that from one of our components. And I'm kind of do, using these hand motions because we're basically going to surround our code. We'll have the start and then we'll have the end and everything in between is going to be our application. Whenever you want to do something like that, you'll probably want to start looking at the app.js file. So app is our outermost component. So you can imagine if we surround everything within app, this whole section with a context, we should be able to access that value within any of these other components. So to do this, we're going to need to import something from React. So let's go ahead and remove unused imports. And then I'll say import, and this is called create context from React. To use this, we're going to export a const. So export const, and we're defining this outside of the app function. You might be used to defining the variables within the function, but because this has an export, we're unable to do that. Export's going to allow us to import this into other files, and we will call us a name to describe what we want to store, such as login context. And this is going to be assigned an invocation to create context. So we defined our context. How do we actually say, hey, we want to put it down here? It's going to look pretty similar to rendering a component. We're just going to say login context dot provider and this is important because we're going to provide a value that's going to be accessible throughout all these other components so we will take the ending tag and move that down to the very bottom of this return now all we have to do is provide a value here and this will typically come from some state variable so let's go ahead and create some state so use state and inside of here we'll say const logged in and set logged in. And this is eventually going to be associated with the access token that the user should be maintaining. But for now, we're just going to hard code a value true as the default and pass in logged in. So that is step one. This is the providing end, how we deliver a value to these other components. Now we have to talk about how do we get that value inside of these components. To do that, let's head into any of the components. I'm gonna start with the header because that's where I'm going to try and toggle this to say logged in, logged out. So it makes sense to start there. We'll go into the header. The way we use the context value is first importing something. So we will import use context from React and we will create a variable here inside of the header function. Const logged in and this is going to come from use context and you're going to pass in the name of the context, which was login context. Now the name here doesn't exist until you import it. So we're going to have another import and that's going to be login context from dot dot app. All right, so let's take a look back at app real quick. That is the thing we created here, this login context. We're exporting it, which allows us to import it over in the header. So there's two things we need to import here. Now, when we 
say use context, we pass in the name and this call is going to return whatever value we stored in it. So this should be true or false. We can check that real quick with a use effect. So we'll say use effect. And I'll write that out real quick here. Use effect. And in here we will just console log logged in. So this is basically going to tell us if we successfully grab the value that was provided to us in the app component. Let's check it. And you can see we get true in the terminal. So that was step one. We created a context and provided a value and we were able to access that value in another component. Let's try again, but this time I want to put in the functionality to toggle that value. Let's say the user's access token expires and we set the logged in to false. For this, we're going to need to provide an additional value to our context because not only do we just want to display the value, we want to be able to change it. So this is going to start up an app.js and where we pass this value in, we can actually put two values here. So we're going to make an array and the second item here is going to be set logged in. Now, Anywhere inside our application, we should be able to set the state as well. Let's talk about how we can access these values in a new component. Let's go with customers. So I'll go to the definition. It's going to be very similar. So we will import use context from React, and then we will import the name login context from dot dot slash app and then inside of our component const and this is interesting because we're going to define this almost exactly like use state since we have two variables now we can say logged in and set logged in and this is instead of use state it's going to be use context and we're just going to pass in login context so very similar to the way we define state just that this is over here a little bit different. Now that we have the logged in and set logged in available to us, if we get an unauthorized response from the backend, we can toggle that state to say that the user is not logged in. This can immediately update the user interface to change what is being displayed. So let's just try this out. Let's go ahead and find where we might get an unauthorized and we will invoke set logged in to false. So let's save that and let's try this out. We will head over to customers and you can see an immediate change in the state. So the state is being printed from the header. We started off with the value being true. When we visited the customers, it realized we got an unauthorized and it changed the value to false. Let's see if we can now use this capability to our advantage to automatically update this value to say log in or log out. So we will define this inside of the header. The way this is done is a little strange because the data is just in this array. And then it's just looped through down here somewhere below. Hopefully yours is not quite as complicated. What I'm gonna do is I'm just going to remove this one here. So it'll loop through those three. We get employees, customers, and dictionary. And then I'm going to manually code in the other one, which is just going to make it a little bit easier. So we'll have an additional nav link. After navigation.map, we will have another nav link spacing here is jank so let me just try to improve this a little bit we're not going to need a key because we're not in a loop this is going to go to we'll start with it just saying log out so slash log out now we're never going to have to worry about this thing being active or inactive so instead we could just assign it some class names directly in a string this is going to simplify our code a lot so let's go ahead and grab these classes here paste that here and those ones are shared whether it's active or not. And then if it's not active, which is the style I prefer, that's what I'm going to take. So I will take these, paste those there, and we should be able to get rid of this entire class name section. Lastly, we can just change the value to log out. All right, so that should be our code. Let's take a look. Cool, so it says log out. We got the basic structure. We may have to do something similar for mobile. So right now it's still not displaying log out. So we're going to have a ternary here now as well for the display. So we'll say logged in. If so, we're going to navigate to log out. Otherwise we will navigate to slash login. 
Now we're going to replace this log out here with a ternary. So we will say, is the user logged in? If so, we will display log out. Otherwise, we will display log in. We'll save. Let's take a look. And you can see it says log out. One other thing I need to do is I need to change the way we're importing logged in because currently it's just referring to an object. So we instead want it to be logged in and set logged in. Okay, that should be better. It should just be true or false now. So let's just start over. So we'll refresh. It's currently true and says log out. We visit an unauthorized page and it automatically changes to log in. That pretty much summarizes the functionality. I'm just going to copy that setup for the mobile version. So we have this nav link here. I'm going to copy that. And we have a different loop down here for mobile. So after the navigation loop, I will paste that. And then I'm just going to do the same thing where I just copy the mobile classes. So we'll take this. And we're gonna replace this entire thing here. That, and if it's not active, then those are the ones we want. So I'll take that. There we go. So now we have a login button. It brings us to the login page. It seems to work well. Now we can just set the is logged in to false anytime we get an unauthorized. If you want practice, you can try it yourself from the customer page. So give it a pause. Otherwise, we're going to go through it here. So hopefully you are a pro by now. We are going to import use context and we will also import login context from dot dot slash app. We will access that within our function const logged in and set logged in coming from use context login context. Now let's go ahead and set logged into false anytime we get a 401. Set logged in to false and we'll find anywhere else that the same thing happens. So here and down here. We will remove our access and when we do something that we're unauthorized to do, this should change to login. There we go. A final change we're going to want to make is that when a user logs in through the login page, we will want to set logged in to true. So we're going to go through a similar exercise here on the login page. So let's go ahead and import. This will be import use context and then import. And this is going to be login context from dot dot slash app. And now we should be able to grab a reference to the logged in value similar like we've done in the other pages so it'll look just like that and now when we successfully log in right before we navigate we will say set logged in to true let's test this out make sure it's working i've already cleared local storage it says log in we're on the login page hit log in and it says log out at this point we're so close to done there's just a few things we need to wrap up Specifically, the default value inside of app.js is currently just true. The other thing is within the header, we need to define custom behavior for a logout button, and we no longer need any console logs throughout our application. So the default value and logging out is what we're going to cover in the next video because these are actually going to be very similar. So that video was pretty wild. Lots of stuff talked about in this episode. So hopefully you have a decent understanding and hopefully we weren't too scatterbrained about this. But I think overall, we got a good application going and it seems to be working. So thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next episode.